Did you know your plants have their own immune system? Just like us, they rely on beneficial microbes to stay healthy and thrive. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of microbes and how they protect your garden from pathogens while boosting plant immunity. Now we're gonna go over some of my favorite garden microbes that you should be using and what they do. So this was spurred by last week's video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Two guys died from bat guano. Now, it wasn't really the guano, it was a fungal spore. And both of these guys had compromised immune systems. They were sick. They were probably taking antibiotics. Now, what happens when you take antibiotics is it wipes out the bad microbes along with the good microbes. And we are essentially 99% microorganism DNA with a little bit of human, we're a human sac carrying around bacteria and fungospores. So if our microbiome it gets out of whack, then we're more prone to disease and pathogen infections, viruses, bacteria, fungal infections like histoplasmosis. So the key is keeping our immunity up. And this is the same for our plants. Plants that have strong immune systems resist environmental stressors along with other pathogens much better. So we're going to talk about some of my favorite microbes for plants and what they do. So we're talking our buscular mycorrhizal fungi today, a few different types of bacillus bacteria, some trichoderma fungus, and entomopathogenic microbes, which are some of my favorite microbes to talk about. So I'm excited. First, we've got our, our buscular mycorrhizal fungi. Now, that's a mouthful. Let's shorten it to AMF, okay? AMF comes in two distinct types, endo and ecto. So if you're familiar with Latin roots, the prefix endo means inside, ecto means outside. Endo mycorrhizal fungi is typically what we see associated with our special happy plant and uh, specific species are Rhizophagus irregularis that has a known relationship with this herb. Now, 90% of all plants have a relationship with an AMF species. There's so many. And I think it's important to remember that the ecology of every microbe, it has its own purpose in an ecosystem, whether it's decomposing, uh, nutrient cycling, it has this unique relationship in its place in the world. And so by learning a little bit more about the species, what they like to eat, what habitat they thrive in, what plants they're associated with, we can ensure that we're providing them with the habitat to thrive. This is ecological gardening, y'all. I love it. So AMF, we've got our endo, we've got our ecto. Endo for the endo and ecto for the forest. So if you checked out my last short on YouTube, it was checking out a small mushroom, which would be an ectomycorrhizal fungi. Now, ecto means outside, endo means inside. So the endo goes inside of the plant's root system, actually penetrating it. And this symbiotic relationship allows the fungus and the plant to exchange information via terpenes and other secondary metabolites, as well as trade nutrients, water, information. This is the way that plants can communicate with the whole network, right? Think of the mycelium, which is the web hair-like structure, the fungal hyphae. That network, that mycelium is like the world wide web. So this is our collective consciousness of the planet is the mycorrhizal fungi. And that's why it takes number one on my top microorganisms for our garden. Now, the ecto mycorrhizal, ecto meaning outside, actually wraps around the root instead of penetrating it. And it produces fruiting bodies outside of the soil, above ground. So we've got the ecto for those mushroom fruiting bodies. We've got the endo for the underground inside the root. So specifically, we've got the rhizophagus irregularis that has a known relationship with that happy plant we like. And, but there's a ton of different species of AMF. So 
uh, BioLive from Down to Earth has a bunch of different varieties, and I like to incorporate it into my garden whenever I'm starting a new plot. Now, the thing to keep in mind, the ecology of these species is they don't like disturbances. So anytime you're tilling, you're destroying that mycelial network. So practicing no-till ensures that our mycelial network remains intact, meaning that nutrients are cycling better, more efficiently, information is transferring from one plant to the next. And when I say it's transferring information, what I mean is that if one plant in your garden is inoculated with the mycelium of the AMF and the plant 20 feet away is in inoculated with that same mycelial network, information through secondary metabolites can, can be sent down through the roots into the mycelium. And then the mycelium can take that information and send it all the way to the other plant and let them know what's going on. Maybe it's a uh, drought stress, maybe it's a pest attack. Um, all of this information can be coded into secondary metabolites and relayed from plant to plant through the AMF. It's amazing. So that is why AMF is taking number one. Now, the next microbe I'm gonna talk about is a variety of trichoderma fungi. So trichoderma is a super aggressive fungus. And because of this, it outcompetes a lot of fungal pathogens. If you've ever grown mushrooms, which I'm doing a mushroom grow along soon, um, check out queenofthesungrown.com and sign up for the mailing list and you'll get all of the information. If you've grown a shoebox style, the tote uh, mushroom grow, uh, you'll know that contamination is one of the biggest issues mushroom growers in encounter. And oftentimes we see this blue fungus growing on our substrate, that is trichoderma. So trichoderma has its place in the world because it is a decomposer and it does such a good job. We can use trichoderma as a foliar spray to outcompete leaf space for fungal pathogens like botrytis or powdery mildew. You can inoculate it as a root drench to outcompete fusarium, pythium, um, things associated with root rot. So trichoderma is something that you should have on hand and incorporate into your integrated pest management plan. Um, if you need help with an IPM plan, I've got IPM classes out the wazoo. So come on over to the patreon.com forward slash queen of the sun grown and join in on classes, weekly live streams, workshops, where we break down all of this. I give you the most affordable options for these products too, because don't fall for the green tax. You can find these in conventional farming um, resources and platforms for much cheaper than your local hydro store. All right. The next group of species I'm going to talk about are bacillus. So bacillus are a bunch of different bacteria um, and there's so many different bacillus. In fact, we use a lot of bacillus in our body, in our gut microbiome. And in recent studies, we correlate our gut microbiome to the production of serotonin and dopamine. And in fact, our mood improves when we have the right gut fauna. And so depression and mood disorders can often be correlated with poor gut bacteria. And if you've taken a lot of antibiotics, like the guys who died from the bat guano, then you might want to start incorporating things like fermented foods and kefir, um, things that incorporate these bacillus or lactobacillus strains of bacteria. Now, the same thing that they do for us, they do for plants. They really help with boosting the plant's immune system, specifically bacillus subtilis, which I use as a foliar as well as a root drench. Now, I have a new product, y'all, Happy Plant Organics for those happy plants to make me happy and you happy. And it incorporates four different types of bacillus in there. So let's break down the four different kinds of bacillus, why I have them in the product and what they do for our plant. First of all, Bacillus megatarium. Now, this one is a heavy hitter for helping solubilize or break down phosphorus. So remember in the bat video how I talked about phosphorus being a finite resource and figuring out ways to unlock more phosphorus naturally? Well, this is the heavy hitter, y'all, Bacillus megatarium. This is going to help us 
break down phosphorus that's inaccessible to our plants, making it available. Now, it also helps with nitrogen. Now, the next one I'm gonna talk about, Bacillus simplex. This also helps in nutrient cycling and increases or enhances a plant's stress tolerance. Uh, Bacillus lichenformis. This again, suppresses pathogens, boosts soil health, and it increases more secondary metabolites, right? Remember, these secondary metabolites are bioflavonoids, terpenes, esters. They're the things that give our plant the wonderful aroma and smell, but they're also responsible for communicating from plants to microbes, to other plants, to pests and insects, all kinds of information is passed through these secondary metabolites. And in fact, they're super beneficial for us. Think aromatherapy. They have those um, medicinal benefits and they're responsible for what we like to call the entourage effect. Now, the last group of microbes I'm going to talk about is the entomopathogenic fungi. Y'all, I love these guys. This is how we use nature and science to protect our plants from pests. So I like to call them zombie spores or zombie microbes because essentially they sporulate, the spore grows out and kills them. And the spores can be passed from pest to pest. Uh, so the issue that we have with some of these entomopathogenic fungi is that some of them are for specific species. So in Patreon, a few months ago, I discussed a specific type of entomopathogenic protozoa that targets grasshoppers. Now, if you've had issues with grasshoppers, you know that the solutions are for organic treatment are limited. So if you understand the life cycle of the protozoa and the grasshopper, you can utilize this protozoa to inoculate and attack your grasshopper population, reducing numbers over time. If you're interested in this, I have an article written on it. I love nerding out on this. My background is in ecology. So I love growing plants, but I love understanding their place in the ecosystem between pests and microbes. And so utilizing entomopathogenic fungi can be a cost-effective way that's super sustainable and reduces our reliance on chemical pesticides, which often have far-reaching impacts um, on our pollinators, on our waterways. So being aware also of the detriments, not even if it says that it's organic. Some of these entomopathogenic fungi can kill bees. So we've got to be careful and learn as much as we can about using them. Woo! So all of these different types of microbes are useful and have their place in our gardens and some of them in our guts and under our fingernails and they're making us happier and healthier. So by creating ecosystems, thriving, healthy habitats in our gardens that support the life of these microbes, we can ensure to, that our plants have the healthiest immune system that they possibly can. And if you'd like to try Happy Plant Organics, the immunity product that has the four bacillus in it that I mentioned. It also has a ton of other ingredients that naturally increase our SAR, our plant's SAR response by boosting jasmonic acid, salicylic acid, all plant hormones that we're going to get into in the next episode next week. So come back and while you're at it, go ahead and watch my Taste the Terps with Mr. Grow It so you can see what I mean about how terpenes are used to communicate with other plants. I have some really cool examples in there from conifer forests and it's Mr. Grow It. He's a great guy. All right, watch that video.